Hey folks, today we're talking about Atten, which is the peg parsing tool that I wrote. I don't want to make this a long video because you will have the opportunity to work with Atten during the lab session and I don't want to steal your beloved assistant standard. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to show you is a JSON grammar. This is on GitHub. It's the repository of the parsers that github.com slash norsweb slash uh, I'm not writing the grammar from scratch again because we already did it that twice and it's maybe becoming to start a little bit tedious. And like I said, you will have to work with that in hands on in the lab session. So this is actually a grammar for the full JSON language. So it's a bit more complicated than the version we saw. Uh, in, in particular, there's like a lot of uh, specs for escape in strings, and there's a complicated uh, specification of floating numbers. And in fact, you know, JSON is JavaScript object notation, so JavaScript only really has floating numbers and not integers. But you can probably recognize the most important things, which are these rules right there. So what does it look like? To make a grammar, you extend the grammar class, which uh, is supplies. Uh, we start with the lexical level, as usual. This just means that the white space is uh, new lines, spaces, and tab. I will not detail every single rule, but I will draw your attention to selective things. So you see here, a choice is simply written as choice. Here we simply have a character, so that's automatically translated to a parser that matches a single character. Repetition is expressed through this at least, so at least one is one or more. And down here you also have at least zero, so that's zero or more. You have sec, which is for sequences. Set is for one character among those. Opt is for optional, so this says basically in the exponent part of the number there might be a plus or a minus in there, but it's optional. Uh, moving on. The word combinator here takes the parser, and we'll talk about push later. And it says basically parse all that, but then parse white space afterwards if there is any. Okay. And what's white space? Well, we specified white space here by saying ws white space. It is the usual stuff, which is spaces, tabs, and new lines. So that's word. Push is the mechanism through which you will most generally generate abstract syntax tree in Atten. So in this case, we're parsing a number. It's JavaScript, so a number is a floating number. And so we're saying, OK, on the, the stack, so it works with a stack, just like the parser we wrote, you will push on the stack something. What is something? It is $.string. So this dollar is, is some sort of magical variable, which basically tells you about what you've matched. Okay, so what this parser has matched, it's collected into this dollar variable, and it tells you what's on the stack, it tells you the string that's been matched, and things like that. So here you want to take the string that's been matched, and you want to extract the double from there with double parse double. And that's what, we, what you will push on the stack. Um, Let's see, let's see what else is interesting. So you see, we also have the lazy parser. So that's the same as the forward reference combinator, which you wrote last time. Uh, here you see something fancy as well is, is some kind of push. But it says, OK, if this succeed, whatever it does, just push true or just push false because, you know, we're just matching false. Um, so there's a lot more here, but this is all explained in the documentation about them, which I'll show to you shortly. I'll just see if there's anything else that's really interesting, uh, really crucial. All this part here. So basically, I've included an example on how you actually get the part started. Okay. So the way you do is you call this atten.parse function, and you can supply it a bunch of things. You can supply it a, a parser, which has the rule in here. 
but you could also supply it the instance of the class directly. So this JSON class, if you instantiate it, you can also supply that. And then it will take the one returned by root. So this returns to you a parse result object, and this has a lot of information. Uh, the first thing we'll check is, did it succeed matching the whole input? That's typically what you want. And if so, we just print the result and we'll say, oh, it succeeded, congratulations. Uh, if not, we also use two string on the result, but we pass it this line map thing, which basically enables the conversion of position in the input into something nice, like line three, column seven, and then it will show a little bit of the code as well. So I'm trying not to say too much, this stuff you will try out. Say you're curious and you want to know more. Excellent. What do you do? Well, you go to the documentation. So see, this is the tree of the Git repository. And you want to go to doc. And there's a main page called readme. And so the manual is right here. It's everything you might need to want. So I suggest you start by the beginning. Uh, what is parsing? By now you probably know. But your first grammar is actually the JSON grammar, except it's a version of the JSON grammar where we do not build a parse tree. And building a parse tree is something we will do in section five. And so these explain, this grammar I just shown to you is explained in, in depth in these sections. And then there's also more explanation of other parsers. Uh, just the whole semantic of Hudson is explained there. You will also advanced topics. So this I need to improve a little bit because some sections are outdated. I've marked them. Uh, those that are not marked are perfectly fine. Uh, but you probably won't need them, excepted this one, debugging and tracing a parse. So let's see what, what this is about. Basically, this gives you tips on how to first find bugs in your grammar and second, uh, improve the performance of your grammar because maybe you write your grammar and you parse some input and you will find that it's very slow. Okay. And there are typical mistakes that people do all the time. And this lists some of these mistakes and how to uh, avoid them. Uh, I will not detail it right now, but it's useful to know that it's there. If you do find a problem with this documentation, or if you want to improve the documentation, say you've, you've used something, you figure something out, you're really proud of yourself, which you should be, and you say, well, I'm going to share my knowledge while well, you just click this link, let's open an issue, say, this is not clear, I want to improve it. You can also do a pull request. I'm going to explain to you how to do a pull request, but either figure it out or uh, ask us. We'll be glad to answer you and uh, we'd be very happy if you contribute in this way. Next time, we're going to go back into the theory and we'll talk about Chomsky hierarchy of grammars. I'll finally explain to you what the hell a context-free grammar is. And we'll also talk about regular expressions and how they're actually related to context-free grammars. See you next time.